Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in. Today's topic is all about the types, uses, sizes, rarities, and locations of the fish you can catch in New World. Now don't worry, I'm not going to go through each and every fish. That would be a very long and repetitive video. Instead, I'm going to cover how these subtypes work and how you can make the most out of each one. And then after that, I'll show you how to use a cheat sheet I made to locate any fish. Now there are 45 different fish spread out all over the map. They are broken up into two categories, saltwater and freshwater, and each region has a different list of fish you can catch in each of these water types. So you won't find every fish in every region, but you can find most fish in at least three. Salmon and treasure chests are the exception, and both can be caught anywhere. You will catch between four different common fish, two uncommons, two to three rares, and a treasure chest in each region's water type. Okay, now you might be thinking, that is a lot of fish. What are they all used for? Well, most are salvaged, used primarily for their fillets and oils and cooking. There are also a number of uncommon and rare items that you can obtain from salvaging fish, and most of those are used in Arcana. Clams and oysters will drop pearls, which can be equipped to a gem slot for an all-purpose luck boost, or used with jewel crafting to make luck boosting jewelry. From one of my previous videos, we discovered that each treasure chest will have up to 50 coins, up to 10 ingots ranging from platinum, gold, or silver, and up to 5 uncut gems of all tiers. A few of the legendary fish are used as furnishings to boost your peacocking score or as a way to give you a buff to boost your chance to catch rare fish. If you don't know what peacocking is, don't worry, I'll explain it better later in this video. You can also get life motes from tadpoles and junk items can be salvaged for wood, fibers, or ingots. Some catches and parts can be used as turn-ins for town project missions. Now all these reasons actually give us another use, which is selling them in the trading post. Now I recommend selling them raw as this puts the chance of obtaining the rare items from salvaging them on the buyer instead of you. I won't dive deep into the subject right now, in fact I'll save this for another video, but just remember, in any marketplace maximizing profits is all about following the trend of supply versus demand, while mitigating your risks. And now let's talk about fish size and why it matters. Yes, I said it, size matters. You know what they say, the bigger the fish, the bigger the salvaging yield. If you want more fillets, fish oils, or a better chance at getting those rare items, you want the bigger fish. If you really want to maximize your salvaging efficiency, piece together a set of gear that gets you to at least 100 points in focus. That way you unlock the bonus that gives you a modest boost of 10% salvaging yield. Now, it may not sound like a lot, but when you're working with high volumes, this will really add up. So just make sure you wear that set just when you're salvaging. Now, there are also a few ways to boost your chance of catching bigger fish. The easiest of which is obtained by size boosting baits. And the best ones to boost your chance of catching larger fish are oysters for freshwater bait and electric eel for saltwater. Next, we have gear perks. There are five different gear perks that relate to boosting the chance of catching bigger fish. You'll only be able to take advantage of three of these perks at any given time. There's a general purpose boost called Fishing Colossus, which works under all conditions. We also have a boost based on the time of the day called Daytime or Nighttime Colossus. And finally, there's a perk to boost the chance based on the water type. And each of these perks come in three different tiers, with the higher tier giving you the biggest boost to the chance. And at 250 points in the focus attribute, you unlock the bonus, which will grant you a 10% boost to the chance of catching larger fish. Now, 250 points is a lot, so you're going to have to do some work to get there if you're not a healer, but you also may consider respecting if you're going out for, you know, a day-long fishing trip. The last way I came across to boost the size was based on water depth, and the results weren't really apparent to me until I was looking at the data, but it seems like there's roughly a 5-10% to 10 boost small fish in very shallow, medium fish in shallow, and large fish in deep waters. So if you want to catch the big ones, you have bait, perks, focus attribute, and the water depth. You know, at the time of recording this, there were no consumables and there were no trophies, but maybe we'll see something in the future. And one last thing worth noting about larger fish is the bigger they are, the more experience you're gonna get. Now, some of you might be saying, wait, Dino, I don't need large fish. I need medium salmon for a town project mission the mayor sent me out to do. Where do I get the medium salmon from? Okay, let's scale it back. Here's the good news. As I mentioned earlier, you can actually catch medium salmon anywhere in the world. The bad news, however, that isn't just a mission you picked up. That is a time sink. Now let me explain why. Okay, so we have at least three other common fish with three different sizes in that water that we're fishing in. This means we have at least a 1 in 12 chance of landing a medium salmon, right? Well, not so fast. It is lower than that. Now remember, there are more than just common fish in the water. And there's always a chance you can catch uncommon or rare fish, a treasure chest, or even a legendary fish, if you're lucky or even some junk if you're unlucky. But let's ignore all that. Let's keep it simple and we'll just work with the one in 12 and call it our best case scenario. 
In our last video, we estimated that it would take about 30 seconds round trip from catch to cast with all things considered in between. Now, this means under our ideal conditions, you only really get medium salmon about every six minutes fishing anywhere. A good thing you only need between 10 and 20 for that mission. So in our best case scenario, you're looking at at least one to two hours to complete this mission. And that depends on what tier you picked up. And worst case scenario, you can just as easily spend twice that amount of time. And you should really expect to land somewhere in the middle of these two. My recommendation is that you only accept this Tom Project mission for the medium or large salmon if you already have the salmon in storage. Or if you don't mind the time it'll take to grind it out. Now, if you don't mind the grind and have to complete this mission to establish dominance amongst your peers, then I have a few pointers for you. First, make sure you're not wearing any equipment that boosts rarity or size, and just don't use any baits to start. Next, fish in just shallow and very shallow waters. No deep water, no hot spots. If you get mostly medium fish, then great, stick to it. But if you get small fish, then maybe apply a little bit of a bait, maybe a small or medium boost to the size of your catch. But if you're catching mostly larger fish, you probably left some gear on or you're using too strong of a bait. Try something a little bit weaker instead. And it's all about finding the sweet spot, and that's what we're doing. We, you know, we're starting off with a blank slate and scaling into it. You know, and remember this when you're out and about fishing. Make sure you don't salvage your medium and large salmons. You know, either save them for these missions or sell them in the trading post. Now, other people will buy them at a huge markup just to complete their mission. Okay, now we're going to talk about rare fish and the best ways to catch them. You know, just like large fish, there are a few things you can do to boost your chances of catching them. Uh, number one best way to boost your chance of catching rare fish is in fishing hotspots. This method is so good you can actually guarantee it. And we talked about hotspots pretty in depth in our last video, so I'll just summarize how loot works for this one. Now, the primary purpose of a hotspot is to boost your chance to catch rare fish. In three star hotspots, you're going to catch rare and above. Two star hotspots, you'll catch uncommon and above. And you'll catch everything in a one star hotspot, but mostly uncommons and commons. Now, currently, there are no epic quality fish or items that can be caught. I'm trying not to read into this too much, but I do think there's a good chance that we may see something added in the future. The next way we can boost our chances of catching rare fish is with fishing baits. For freshwater fishing, our go-to is going to be the firefly bait, which can obtain pretty easily picking up the bulrushes along freshwater and also in swamps. And for every thousand bulrushes you pick up, you'll be able to walk away with about 500 to 600 firefly baits. Now, this doesn't mean you'll get one every other bulrush. It's about 15 to 20 percent chance of finding them. But when you do find them, you'll get between one and four from each. And for saltwater, you have the glowworm bait. You can find these guys picking up flints during the nighttime. And for every thousand flints you pick up, you'll walk away with about 250 to 300 glowworms. If you get nightcrawler bait when you pick up a flint, it's not considered nighttime by the game yet. Now we also get three gear perks to influence the rarity of fish caught. There's a catch-all general purpose booster called Lucky Waters. And there's a pair of time of day boosters called Lucky Night and Lucky Day. However, unlike size, there does not appear to be any sort of booster for rarity based on the water type. There's also no bonus to focus that boosts rarity. And the last and final way I know to boost rarity is with the house furnishing trophies. And they come in three tiers, each boosting your chance more than the previous. First tier is pretty easy to make, but you will need a few legendary fish to make the second and third ones. So if you got your eyes set on the rarer fish, you need to set your focus on the hot spots. You can also use baits, gear, perks, and trophies to influence the rarity of your catches. Now let's talk about the legendary fish. So there's 14 legendary fish and each one can be found in a different region. It can be caught in both water types, in hot spots and out. Legendary fish are considered large and are currently the rarest thing that you can catch. There are currently three uses for legendary fish. Some are used to make the top tier foods. You can also use them as a furnishing to boost your peacocking score. The score is a measure of the items found inside your house. The housing score is how the town decides whose house to show to the public in each property. The highest score is obviously the one that is shown. And the final use for legendary fish is just as a trophy furnishing for your house. And the trophies, as you already know, boost the chance of catching rare fish. Okay, so where do I find clams, aquatic snails, and every other fish in the game? Well, both clams and snails can be found in five different regions, but you can find both of them in First Light and Monarch's Bluff. Clams can be found in salt water, aquatic snails can be found in fresh water. And since they're both uncommon, you have a better chance of finding them in a one-star or a two-star hotspot. You know, as for the rest of the fish, good old-fashioned discovery is how I located all of them. You know, it took a great deal of time. The plus side is I was able to use all this data to create a nice little printable fishing cheat sheet. It includes every uncommon, rare, and legendary fish location. I also included a few little helpers and reminders for you, like a hotspot summary chart, water depth chart, and best baits breakdown. 
Now the list is broken up by rarity, then alphabetical. Each fish will have a water type and a list of two letter abbreviations. Each one of these stands for a different region. At the bottom left, you'll find a legend that'll help you familiarize yourself with the different abbreviations I use. And on the far right of each row is what special items we get from salvaging besides normal fish fillets. I didn't think it was necessary to include all the common fish, as the only one that's needed for something specific is salmon, which you already know you can catch everywhere. As far as I know, the rest of the common fish have no special purpose beyond just being a source of fillets and fish oil. And if you use it wisely, it should save you a little bit of time and give you a slight edge when it comes to competitive fishing at launch. You can also find a mobile friendly and searchable version of this list on my website. You can find links straight to the cheat sheet and the web version in the description of this video. I'll continue to update these as needed. And feel free to share these with your friends, companies, and communities. Now I know I shared a lot of information with you in this video. Just keep in mind it is all subject to change. Everything was gathered during the closed beta. If you're watching this after the game launches, make sure you check and see if there's an update in the description. As for my subscribers, if there's a major changes, I'll be sure to let you know. And that's going to be it for this one. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions about today's topics, please leave them in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them for you. If I missed anyone's questions from a previous video, feel free to repost them in this one. I do try my best to respond to everyone. Okay, take care. See you again soon.